the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Christ is in our midst. He is in every shadow. I should say, Christ is risen. Indeed, he, he is, is risen. risen. The, um, when farmers go out and plant seeds, uh, they do so uh, for generations and have a long tradition of doing, doing so going back thousands of years. We know the various seeds. Farmers uh, who specialize know um, which seeds go on which soil. They know how to grow them, how to water them, how much sun they need. And um, there's a reasonable expectation that if the conditions are right, that indeed the crop will grow and it will bear fruit. There are other industries like this. Think of all the, the various industries, even, even science. We know that if we throw something up in the air, that it will fall because of gravity. There are all sorts of assumptions that we make in life um, where we enact a, a type of faith. For instance, when I mentioned the farmer, the, the farmer sows seed in faith that it will grow. Now, it's not just faith, but there's also the past evidence that is built up over all the years of practice and experience where he has seen that his faith is justified. If the farmer had no faith that the seeds would grow, if the um, doctor had no faith that the treatment would work, and if there was no faith that when we put our keys into our car that our car would start, then we would stop doing it. Why bother? So faith and experience are often tied very closely together. It's the same within our um, tradition, within our faith. Today we commemorate the Apostle Thomas who, um, who wants to verify that it is Christ by seeing the print of nails and seeing uh, the Lord's side. And Jesus humbles himself and verifies this to Thomas and gives the great confession, my Lord and my God. But we're generations apart from this. We're generations apart from this confession, from this touching of the Lord's side. And Jesus even spoke to this. He said, blessed are those who believe even though they have not seen with their physical eyes. But it doesn't mean that there isn't supposed to be some sort of experiential lineage that would justify our faith. Some would say our faith is reasonable. But even more than that, it's justifiable. Because we see in every generation that Jesus manifests himself to various people. That we have the saints in the church who testify and show the way, and show the methodology, and show the, the prayers and their, by their lives, that Christ isn't simply a fable that we put on, or a philosophy that we put on. As a matter of fact, the, apostles, the Apostle Peter says this, he says, this is not some fables that we've made up, we've seen and we've touched. And the task for modern Christians is to be able to see and to touch, not in the same way that the Apostle Thomas does, but to be able to experience and come in contact and come in communion with the living God. Now, throughout the history of the church and the lives of the saints, we see many sanctified people, many people who left their entire lives to follow Jesus Christ. Many who, in the context of their families, experienced Jesus Christ and saved, had found salvation within their families. We see every person in every aspect of life, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, ascetics, every single um, uh, shoemakers, you know, uh, restaurateurs, I'm sure, um, dedicating their lives to Christ experiencing the grace of God, and ultimately verifying their faith by being sanctified and growing in Christ. So we're brought to the point of ourselves. And 
the fact that we may be generations away from St. Thomas, but we are not generations away from the last saint. And even more than that, as taking their cumulative witness, we can believe, at least intellectually believe, that through the teachings of the Church, through prayer, through reading the Scripture, through all the services and various quote-unquote methodologies that the Church has developed, that Christ still lives, that we can still have an encounter with Him, that He can still transform our lives. But even this sort of belief, this belief in the history, isn't necessarily enough. We have to, like Thomas, ask that Christ reveal Himself to us. Not just one time in a dramatic gesture where we ask for salvation, but continually every day, one of our prayers should be, Jesus, show Yourself to me. Help me and guide me. Help me to live my life. That Jesus Christ can manifest Himself to us. Now, it may not be in a dramatic vision or a miracle, such as was the foundation of the faith that we read about in Acts in today's epistle. It may not be that when our shadow passes somebody, they're healed. We may not see those dramatic revelations, but of course they do happen nowadays as well. What is more important that Christ reveals Himself to us is that somehow He comes into our hearts, into our lives, and, he begins to, and we begin to commune with Him. That we begin to have a relationship with Him. A relationship where we speak to Him, He speaks to us. Where we listen to Him, and He listens to us. Where He gradually sanctifies us, changes us, uh, heals us, and gives us strength within our walk of faith. And this is all entirely possible, but our faith will always remain an aloof faith if we haven't had our own connection to the living God. So, Thomas, in his verifying of that Jesus Christ was not only in the flesh, but indeed that He had rose from the dead, is one person in a lineage and in a generation that proves to us the truth of Jesus Christ. But we're not meant to rest on mere history. We're also meant to engage Christ and say, show yourself to me. Reveal yourself to me. Heal me. Forgive me. Transform me. And that's where the faith actually becomes real and not just theoretical. I think it was Father George Borowski, he writes this uh, book, it's called Imperial Dogmatic, Empirical Dogmatics. Empirical. That the fathers of the church would call prayer a science. These are all things that point to the central truth. That there is a Christian empiricism, a continuity of experience of the living God that we too can have alongside of the Apostle Thomas. May our Lord reveal Himself to us in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Christ is risen. Indeed, He is risen.